So thank you guys so much for having me in your city and making this event possible. Now, to those of you uh, that may not know what I do already, my name is Julian Brown, I'm 21 years old, and I am innovator of a process of turning plastic waste into fuel with microwave technology. So for the past five years, I have built five prototypes by myself from the ground up handmade of microwave pyrolysis reactors and in human language, basically machines that turn plastic into fuel. And today, we're going to be making history and I'm going to be running the first ever truck off of plastiline, my gasoline alternative made from plastic waste. So, oh, you guys want to <laughs> I'm very excited myself. Austin, Texas yesterday, and we did run the first ever chainsaw off of plastic waste, so that was pretty cool. But it's especially cool to be able to run engines because that's the real application of fuel that we use every single day. And so what we're here for now is a Q&A session because I want to give you guys the floor to ask me any question that you may have about uh, my plastic to fuel mission. Another thing I do, I do have uh, Jabaroma, which is my natural deodorant spray. I make 100% natural and handy deodorants. No chemicals that work 24 hours. It's actual natural deodorant that works. Okay, so that's something I do. I have a stable out there. I'll speak more on that a little bit later, but you can ask questions about that as well. I will break down just kind of my mission statement, what I do before we go into the questions. And so in short, like I said, I'm 21 years old. I've been doing this since I was 17 in high school. And, you know, so me, the mission is, I saw the oceans and how they are, and I just thought it was absolute absurdity, right? And I did research into recycling. I learned they don't even recycle not even 5% of the plastic, right? You put it in the recycle bag, it actually is more of a chance to end up in the ocean than to be recycled. If you actually do research into what plastic is, plastic is made of petroleum. It's made of crude oil, the same thing that we make fuels out of. And to me, it's like a no-brainer. You know, I was looking online trying to figure out why, why are they doing this thing? Why are they turning into fuel? Why do we have ocean plastic? I really couldn't find a good reason why, so I said, I'm going to figure out myself. I'll go on the path, and I'm going to go down the mission of truly recycling. Like, I'm not lying to people, and like the companies do, and we're just putting it in the ocean. Give me the plastic, I'm really, truly putting it in my machine and turning it into fuel, and that's what I'm standing on. No matter what, at all times, 100% integrity, 100% honesty, and, you know, hard work and perseverance, transparency. I show all my work online. So, you know, to those of you that may not know who I am, I do have collectively 3 million followers across all social medias. So it's been a great journey and position that I've been put in to uh, be able to share this message with the whole world. So above all else, I want to thank all of you because all, every single one of you make what I do possible through your support, through your donations, through being here today. So I want to thank all of you. So give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> and once again, thanks all for being here today. So now we will start with the questions. So, yes. My first question, I guess, I have a lot of questions for you. But my first question is, how uh, far away do you think in years are we from having this type of technology maybe either replace or be an alternative to just a generator at the house? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So, essentially he was asking like, how far are we from really having this technology adopted <coughs> in the world or like, you know, the scale that it really should be. And, you know, it's not hard to give an exact date or, or number on when because that does, you know, kind of get into like governments or regulatory things, permits, all that and slow things down. But, you know, I've been doing it for five years now and I really, my goal is within the next five years, but I've been doing it for a decade, I don't want, you know, I want this to be known. I don't want it to be like a known solution. When we see plastic waste, we know so one of the options we can do with it is turning the fuel. And the long-term goal is to have these machines in every city at a decentralized level. Every city in the world, every country in the world, plastic is dealt with at the source. What investments, opportunities, or for your organization, stocks? What are you trying to do with investors? Great question, Darren, and I do get asked that quite frequently. Right now, I don't have anything uh, set up for investments. I'm in a private company, and you know, it's something I can put a lot of thought towards on how I'm going to do that the best way, because you know, it gets to the point where I want everybody that believes in me to be able to invest. 
Because then, of course, you're building your own portfolio to and you're believing in me. But at the same time, with just kind of how the system works out, works out, you have to have a board of directors, you can be voted out of your own company. You know, you have a certain way. You have people with more percentages than you. People that can choose how your company runs. Like, you know, am I really recycling because it's not as profitable, or am I just lying and saying I'm recycling because that's more profitable than they do now? And so the integrity of the mission has to stay solid. And so I'm always looking for new options. If I, if I can find a way where I can make sure anybody can invest, but I can make sure that I keep the mission and the control, then that will absolutely be something that opens up in the future. So my question is, do you think we would be able to keep using plastic waste as either plastic diesel or plastic gas with the rise of EV technology? Or do you think it would be better to work alongside it as we do with hybrids as of right now? So I truly believe that hybrid vehicles are kind of the best, the best mix of both worlds. But the market is unequivocally showing that EVs are taking over. But believe it or not, even at the entire, every single car in the world right now for EVs, there's still a huge market for fuel. <laughs> the military, construction vehicles, planes, Factories that you know make the electricity for electric cars to run off of, they run off of some of them run off of coal, natural gas, boats. There's a lot of things that we haven't even seen yet that are even close to being adopted for EV. I mean, I don't think we're gonna have EV rockets. <laughs> so you know there's a lot of application and people ask that all the time, they also say like, what happens if we phase out of plastic? Like if plastic's no longer used, what will you do? There's two answers to that question, but the first answer is plastic will never stop being used. Even in EVs, they're, they're full of plastic, mm -hmm. right? And there, there are certain things that plastic doesn't break down, but that's why we use it for so much, right? Do you want the hoses in your car to break down quickly because it's not plastic, it's made of corn or something? No, you want that reliability, but what happens when that car is at the end of its life, right? We need a solution that can handle, no matter what the phase or how old the plastic is, or if it's dirty, if it has oils in it, and that's the solution I'm offering. Now, the second answer to that question it, you know, what if plastics go out? The great thing about what I do is my machine handles waste in general, right? So even beyond plastics, I put food waste in my machine and I make fuel. You know, I put rubber tires in my machine and I make fuel. I will put dirty diapers in my machine. In fact, matter of fact, I will. <laughs> That's just how it works. The business is breaking everything back down to basic chemical parts. You can put wood in the machine, biomass, yard waste. It all works, so there will always be a market for this technology. My name is David. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for coming out here and just raising awareness in this problem. So my question is, my wife and I are both architectural designers, and we're thinking about how this technology eventually will scale. I know you're not necessarily worried about scaling, you're more so right now maybe worried about figuring out how to make the process as efficient as possible, but I want to ask what challenges you might foresee in the future on how this process could scale or what challenges you're facing now on scaling? Yeah, so the machine I have now is my fifth iteration, and I've designed my machine to be scalable. The very way how it's been laid out is so it can be like multiplies, 10x, 20x, it can get getting bigger and bigger, right? And so the only thing that stops you from scaling is purely just the financial piece of it. It's, you know, everything is very expensive. I do have a solution to that. And that is through government grants because you can get a few million dollar government grants. Just for instance, everybody, NASA just opened up a four million dollar grant for anybody that can figure out how to deal with like waste in space from humans, like plastic waste. So I apply. So you know, if I get that, I'll be cool. You know, but the government has a lot of things for this because you know this is not what's happening to recycling, but this is energy too. All kinds of energy. So the Department of Energy and the government in general is very interested. I see. Yes, yeah, so raise your hand back there. So I'm touching on this guy in the back and the guy in the front's kind of question for Bond. So I understand that you're not taking right now financial, I guess, sponsors. But what if, you know, say a construction company or even an oil company was to come to you and maybe sponsor your equipment? Is that something that, you know, in the future you would be looking at? But what would they be sponsoring it for? Because nobody does something for free, right? They want something in return, and that's what's always a big question. What if you did get an opportunity, hypothetically, you got an opportunity where their intentions somehow align with yours, 
in a more aesthetically pleasing way? Well, it, it would depend. Because look, I'm, I'm, I'm a question for all you guys. Do you guys think, knowing what I've done for all these years, and as, to actually add to my journey, uh, last year, around this time, I got blown up. I blew myself up. <laughs> and, and actually, you can see the scars here. You see the discoloration in my foot. Oh, I looked it up for you guys. I used to, I used to be in karate. <laughs> So basically, I'm really committed to this. I, I'm really serious. Because even get, after getting blown up, second degree burns, hospital burn surgery, they had to use boiling water to scrape off the burned skin. I went right back to it. And welcome in everybody else that uh, has been walking in. Thank you guys for making it out. So knowing my journey, been at this for five years, handmade, self-taught, do you think if somebody came along with an amazing opportunity, let's say, they said, we'll give you $10 million, but we want to hack your company. Should I even take that deal? No. And, and that's the thing, because most of, you know, almost all the opportunities I've been given is, is outlined like that. They, you know, they have it offered to me, but they want way too much of a stake. Because at the end of the day, they didn't get blown up. You know, I got blown up. Yeah. <laughs> and so I deserve to have all control of the company, because I, I risk my life for it. And so, that's kind of what my issue has been with equity really up to this point. But I'm always open to things to kind of find a way to make it work. Yes, so that is the one model I'm looking at when it comes to investment. And that comes later, but in a way, because it, it will come with machines and full production. But the franchise model, I want it to be like, okay, let's say I'm opening, I'm building a machine here in Houston. Everybody in the community, you can invest and own a percent of the machine here in Houston. That particular machine, so not the company, but that particular machine, that machine's profits, whatever. Because then, of course, I still own my company. I'm not, I can't be voted out of my own company. Just so, for reference, because we brought up electric vehicles, did you guys know Elon Musk did not start Tesla? Yes. He voted out the original founders of Tesla because they let him in as an investor. That's the game. They do that all the time to people. If that happens to my company, who knows if they're going to actually be recycling the plastic. It's from the tracker record we see, they say they're recycled, but they really don't. And like I said, I keep it real. If I'm recycling, if I say it, I'm really doing it. So the franchise models are really interested in. And you said overseas, absolutely overseas. You know, I already all the time speak with people from many different countries that are interested in the technology, especially the island nations like Jamaica, you know, Belize, places that, that don't really have land or space. So I would love to set that up, and I think that's the best kind of balance between both where we can have everybody invest, but I can still make sure the company has the right mission.